All right. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, good morning, everybody. We are live. We are live with the 5th Medical Recruiting Battalion. My name is Otis Toussaint. I'm the social media manager here in the battalion, and we've got a good one for you today. We've got Sergeant First Class William Booth from the Kansas City uh, Recruiting Medical St Station. He's going to share with us some information regarding medical school and getting it paid for by the U.S. Army. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on the man of the moment, Sergeant First Class, William Booth. Sergeant Booth, how you doing? Good morning. I'm good, good morning, thanks for having me. How are you? We're doing good, we're doing good today, man. Hey, I, we really appreciate you coming out and you know just sharing some really good information to those who are interested in getting this information today. It's in regards to HPSP and a multitude of other options that's out there for medical school that the U.S. Army can pay for today. Yeah, it's great. I'm excited to be here and hopefully get this information out there to some people that are interested. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and let's just get into the slides right now. Wait, hold on. Let's add on a quick banner so that people can see your point of contact. And it's going to be scrolling on the bottom the entirety of our presentation. You know, we're excited for this. Okay, so let's get into, let us get into one second. Let's get into the presentation. All right. All right. All right, here we go. All right, Sergeant Booth, let me bring this back here. All right, let's start from the beginning. HPSP, go ahead and share with us, Sergeant Booth. Yeah, so HPSP, otherwise known as the Health Profession Scholarship Program, is a full ride scholarship program for medical, dental, uh, veterinarian students, and there's also scholarships for clinical psychology, uh, CRNA, um, family nurse practitioner for their MSN or doctor nurse practitioner, as well as optometry. Um, the big one that we look for mainly and that we provide scholarships for is MedCorps. So for people going to medical school. So like I said, it's a full ride scholarship. So it provides 100% of tuition, books, fees, any equipment that your school might need. For example, AT Still University in Missouri requires their students to have iPads. So the Health Profession Scholarship pays for those iPads. So that way the students don't have to worry about that. Um, it also provides a stipend of $2,300 a month, which is for the students to do whatever they need to do with it. We hope they use it for like food and living expenses, um, but the Army doesn't monitor that. It's just so that way they don't have to worry about getting a part-time job or something in order to pay for their food and apartment and whatnot. So that's a big so let's, uh, let's so Let's rewind. So the HPSB scholarship will cover my full tuition, correct? Correct. Yep. All right. It will cover a stipend, correct? Yes. Okay. And it will cover fees also. What type of fees did you mention before? Yeah. So a lot of schools have fees associated with them. And so the scholarship covers those fees, whether it's book fees, equipment fees, it's just regular student facility fees. The scholarship covers that and it doesn't come out of your stipend. Other uh, scholarship programs, such as the Rural Health Scholarship in Kansas, they provide a stipend. However, that entire first month stipend pretty much goes to the students paying off fees. So that's a little bit of a plus when it comes to the Army scholarship versus other scholarships that are out there. Okay. And how much is that stipend? Uh, it's $2,300 a month before tax. Wow. Yep. $2,300 before tax. Yes. Okay. That's excellent. All right. So what else you got to, for us on this slide? Yeah. So in addition to that uh, stipend, medical and dental students are uh, they have the option of getting a $20,000 sign-on bonus. So wow. for uh, four years on active duty, you can get $20,000 plus that stipend and your full medical or dental school paid for. Now, unfortunately, that bonus only applies for medical and dental students, um, but that's okay. Um, you know, if you're in one of those other categories like veterinary school, clinical psychology, all those other things, still having your school paid for is a big plus along with a stipend, you know. Mm -hmm. Does it depend on the school that you go to? Does the army pay for the school, any type of school? Like where, what, where should that school be located or associated with? So there are a few restrictions. Uh, you can the school has to be accredited and within the United States, um, mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. You, so you can't go to like one of those schools in the Caribbean, like Ross, um, unfortunately. But it doesn't matter if it's Harvard Medical School 
or if it's UMKC Medical School, it doesn't matter. As long as it's within the United States, the Army's going to pay for it. Okay. So I just got to qualify for that school, get in, and then the Army will pay for my tuition, my books, my room and board, give me a stipend, $2,300. That's before tax, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. okay. So anything, yeah. anything else? Yeah. So... Um, it is an application process, so you have to do more than just get into the medical school. You still have to apply for the scholarship itself, and it is very competitive because the Army, of course, wants the best of the best. So mm -hmm. the Army takes into account the total person package, not just your academics and like your MCAT or DAT scores. You know, um, They want to know, are you doing extracurriculars? Do you have good letters of recommendation? Things like that, um, because ultimately they're investing in you. So the odds are if you get into a good medical school, you're probably going to have those other things as well. Okay. So you don't just need to be uh, an, a great scholar. You need to actually be a well-rounded person. They're going to, they want to know everything about you, essentially. They want to know, hey, is this person worth the investment that we're putting into them? Yep, exactly. Because in addition to being an army doctor or army clinician of some sort, uh, you're going to be an army leader, specifically an army leader in the army medical department, which is one of the most elite healthcare organizations within the world. So the Army really takes pride in that, and they want to make sure they can get people in the Army that are going to be great leaders later on down the road. Oh, excellent, excellent. Okay, so go ahead and share with us anything else on this slide. Uh, something important to know when it comes to HPSP, it's there's boards that take place every month, uh, application boards, when it comes to MedCorps. But when you get into, like, the dental scholarship, veterinary scholarship, clinical psych, optometry, and CRNA, those happen once a year, um, various times throughout the year. So if you're in one of those fields and you're looking to apply to those schools next year coming up or you've already applied, definitely reach out to a recruiter and figure out when that application board takes place because it might have already passed, um, unfortunately, for you as a, the person out there applying. Um, and also when it comes to clinical psychology, you need to actually do an interview with a current Army clinical psychologist in June. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to apply this next coming year, you need to already start getting on it because we're about to hit a April or May, excuse me, and then June's right around that corner. So it's definitely important to reach out to a recruiter as soon as you're even thinking about the scholarship program. Got it. So timing matters. Timing, yeah, timing absolutely matters out there. Timing does matter, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. like I was saying before, it's a one for one. So for each year you receive the scholarship, you serve one year on active duty. Um, some key things to note specifically for medical students is that you're going to match into an army residency. So okay. what, does army that, has, what does that mean? What does that mean? So what does that mean? So every medical student, um, when they get closer to the end of their time in medical school, they'll do this match process, whether it's civilian army, doesn't matter. You're going to do a match process to try to get into a residency, which is a specialized training program mm -hmm. to become like a gynecologist or a family medicine doctor or something like that. Um, and the army has its own residency programs, uh, scattered amongst the 12 training hospitals in the Army. So okay. you're going to match or you're going to apply for certain programs and you'll match into one of them. Now, the match rate in the Army is 99%. So that's a far wow. cry from the 80-something percent that it is on the civilian side. So wow. you, the odds are you're going to match into the residency, one of the residencies that you want. Now, there's no guarantee it's going to be your first choice, but it's going to be one of the three that you pick for sure. So wow. that's important to know. And while in residency, those now captains, because once they finish medical school or their doctoral program, they are now captains in the United States Army. So they skip, essentially skip second and first lieutenant and jump right into captain. Um, and then while in residency, they're getting paid as a captain. They're on active duty status. So they're accruing time in service or time towards like a retirement, essentially, or time, time towards a promotion um, while wow. they're in residency. Now that time in residency doesn't count towards time paid back. So their mm -hmm. active duty service obligation doesn't count towards that. But if you think about it, if a medical student has a four year residency following medical school and they have that four year scholarship, so they do four additional years after residency, they've already spent eight years technically on active duty and they're probably already getting looked at for major at that point. Um, and if you're doing a full 20 year career, that's only 12 more years to retirement. Wow. So by that time, they could be lieutenant colonel or colonel, you know. So oh, wow. there's a lot of good benefits. So that is that is excellent. So let's let's do the math, right? Let's do the math. 
Yeah. A typical college student graduates around what age? Uh, 21, 22. 21, 22. They get into four-year uh, medical school, right? Mm -hmm. And then they add on another four years of residency time or so? Yep. So 22, 21, 22 plus eight years, that's 30. And then you owe, you know, how many years after that? So at that point, um, you that would be the end of your contract because following, so like four years in residency, 22 to age 26, that's your residency, mm -hmm. then 26 to 30, that's your mm -hmm. active duty service obligation have be, being served. So if they just do their time, uh, four years, they'll get out at like the age of 30 and have had mm -hmm. their entire medical school paid for, as well as have eight years of experience under their belt. Um, and mm -hmm. potentially they come out as a major or a senior captain from the United States Army. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the, what, what else do you, would you like to share with us on this slide? Uh, that's really it. I mean, that's like the big ticket items. There's a lot more in-depth things when it comes to the program. When, as you get into specifics with each core, for example, dental core, you have to apply for internships following dental school. Same with veterinary school. Um, but those are kind of, those are smaller details, but we can get into those if you like. I mean, I can certainly talk about them. Well, I think uh, those who are interested, who are reaching out uh, for information regarding this, reach out to your local recruiter. They could uh, obviously give you more information regarding that. Let's yep. kind of jump on, let's jump on to the next slide. Sure. All right. So the Specialized Training Assistance Program or STRAP uh, mm -hmm. and the Health Profession Loan Repayment Program, HPLRP. So the HPSP, that is a active duty program strap and the reserve component HPLRP is a reserve program. So let's say active duty isn't really your thing um, and you've already kind of passed that point where you're moving on past medical school or past dental school and you're looking to somehow get some extra money during residency, right? Or your internship. Strap is just that, it's for advanced training. So if you're a medical student in residency, Strap will give you a $2,300 a month stipend to kind of help offset that cost. Um, now it doesn't sound like much, but Strap can be combined with the Health Profession Loan Repayment Program. So what that is, is it's essentially, it's, well, it's exactly what it sounds like, it's a professional loan repayment program. So an example, um, emergency medicine doctors. So if you're a resident in emergency med, you can qualify for a $40,000 a year, $250,000 lifetime loan repayment while you're doing the strap that stipend program. So, wow. Yeah. So it really works out. So there you're essentially paying back your loans as you are getting that stipend while you're in residency. So I know we are, we've got uh, comments and questions coming in. We're going to save that uh, to the end of our presentation and we'll answer your questions. So feel free to leave comments and we will answer those comments and questions for you at the end of our presentation. All right. Thank you, y'all. Go, go ahead and continue, sir. Yeah. So the health professional loan repayment program, it doesn't apply to every specialty in the army, it's similar to HPS, but it doesn't apply to everything. Um, it's specifically going to be those like things that the army is looking for the most. And then when you're talking about strap, it applies to your, you know, your medical doctors, your dental doctors, um, your CRNAs, your nurse, nurse anesthetists, um, mm -hmm. psych nurse practitioners, as well as um, for those two categories, it's looking for a master's of science and nursing and your doctorate mm -hmm. and nurse practitioner. So it's a good variety there um, when it comes to STRAP. It's basically anything that requires that additional almost doctorate level, you know, or then some. So okay. it's a program, okay. something important to know, it's not the same as the HPSP where it's a one for one obligation. So for every six months, you are um, receiving strap stipend. Mm -hmm. That's one year in the reserves that you'll spend. So okay. it's a little bit different. Um, but when you think about getting that health professional loan repayment, that HPLRP, while getting the strap, it really works out, especially if you know, you're not too keen on leaving the area that you already live in because the, the benefit of the army reserves is you get to live where you want to live and you get to work mm -hmm. where you want to work. And then you essentially do the army part time, so to speak. So you have two weekends a month and, and that's when you go to drill or battle assembly, do some admin tasks and maybe some other things. And then a two week training exercise in the summer where you go 
set up like an army hospital in the field um, and kind of do what you're meant to do as an army doctor. So, okay. so, so STRAP is a program set up for those who are in reservists, right? So it's a program set up for people that want to be in the reserves. So in you know, the reserve. Yeah. You can be already be in the military to apply for it if you're in the reserves or something like that, um, or you can be a civilian. Okay. And something, something to note um, for all these programs, any program you apply for um, with the Army Medical Department, having some prior military service is always beneficial um, because it kind of shows, you know, you have a propens propensity to serve and you've kind of invested yourself in the Army. And we get a lot of people interested in STRAP that are current reservists and they've been working mm -hmm. through um, medical school or dental school or things like that. And they just want to continue serving in the reserves, but in a higher capacity as well as get some of that school paid off a little bit more than they probably have already. Tracking, tracking, absolutely tracking. Okay, anything else you wanna share about uh, this slide? Uh, nope. Think you're good there? Yeah. That okay, good. all right, let's jump on to the next one. And here we go. All right, Master of Social Work Program and the Social Work Internship Program. So this is a great program. Um, it's open, so the Master of Social Work Program first, it's open to both civilians and military who are trying to be a social worker in the army on active duty. So in order to get into this program, you have to apply to the University of Kentucky as well because the program goes through their social work program. Okay, got so it, it's a 14 it. month program at the University of Kentucky, which consists of like 60 semester hours. Um, and then that's followed up by a 26 month social work internship program. So that's SWIP. Um, and then once you're done with the program, you have a 42 month active duty service obligation. Um, and in order to be eligible for this program, you need to have an undergraduate, preferably in some sort of social science, um, mm -hmm. just because it's kind of like, that's kind of what you do in order to get to social work. You have a social science undergraduate. Um, and you also need to have at least 18 semester hours in social or behavioral sciences. So if you have some sort of different degree, that's not necessarily social science, you need to at least have those semester hours. Um, and that's just the, like the minimums to apply for the program. Um, and again, similar to some of those HPSP application boards, the social work, Masters of Social Work program happens once a year. That application board happens in February. So if people are looking into that, they need to make sure, you know, they get on the ball um, because February is right around the corner. I know it's April, but it's going to creep up on people quick. And, and application I mean, matters. Yeah. matters. Exactly. Yeah. And the process can be kind of lengthy depending on um, each individual situation. Okay. So, all right. So is there anything else you want to share with us about this? Uh, well, we'll move on to the SWIP, to SWIP. So mm -hmm. SWIP is also open to civilians and military. Um, so like I was saying before, if you're a recipient of the MSW program, you're going to go on into SWIP. So SWIP is a combined program. Um, there's only five slots a year for SWIP. So it's very competitive. Um, so basically, if you're not in that MSW program, you better be like top notch, best of the best, because we get quite a few people that apply. And with five slots nationwide, it's extremely competitive. So okay. that is going to be conducted at one of the multiple Army medical treatment facilities where they do this program. And it's for, like I said, for 26 months, you're essentially going to learn and get hands on experience as a social worker and gain the knowledge that you need in the field to be a competent and fully capable, if not elite social worker within the United States Army. Um, and so the active duty service obligation for this one is 30 months. And again, this is also one of those specialty boards that only happens once a year and that happens in June. So if you're trying to apply for this coming one, man, you better reach out to your recruiter like yesterday and <laughs> figure out um, how to get it done or reach out to Sarn Booth. The information is swirling right there on the bottom. Reach yep. out to him. Reach out to him. Help I, you can out. Definitely, I can definitely help him out. And if you're somewhere yeah. else across the world, I can get you to the closest recruiter to help facilitate the application process as quickly as possible. That's the, thing, that's the thing not a lot of folks may be aware of. Where, Depending on where you're living in the world, we can find a recruiter to reach out directly to you. Of course, you know, online, we could reach out to you as well. So yeah, definitely good that you shared there. Anything else that you want to add here? No, that's the, the that's the gist. That's the gist of those two programs. Yeah, both great active okay. duty programs. 
Okay, so let's get back to the split screen real fast. So we've got some questions coming in. Now is the time. If you have a question, any question at all, feel free to type it on your YouTube if you're following on YouTube or if you're following us on Facebook. We've got one question coming. Well, we've got a couple. We've got one question coming in. Yep. Uh, the question is, does this program work for individuals that are currently on active duty and are interested in going to nursing school? Which, uh, which program is that? I think she was, uh, at the time that that question was asked, so let me go back to here. I think it is in regards to either the STRAP program. No, it can't be STRAP because that's reserved. So HPSP is probably uh, the time that uh, she was asking that question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can definitely apply for HPSP. Um, and somehow, if somehow you're doing medical school while you're on active duty, that would be very impressive. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. If you're getting ready to get out of active duty and trying to go into residency, there's a possibility. I mean, there's little loopholes for everything. Uh, you just have to get out there and the recruiters have to find the answer for you. But um, yeah, if it's for HPSP, you can definitely apply for it while on active duty. If it's one of the other programs like MSW or SWIFT, you can also apply for those while on active duty. Okay. Okay. Good question, Renee Brown. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. We've got the next question, the next comment. Well, it's a question. It says, if you complete your MSW, not through the University of Kentucky, can you apply for SWIP? Yep, 100%. So SWIP, as long as you have your Master's of Social Work from an accredited school within the United States, uh, you can apply for SWIP. Okay. Good question, uh, Ms. Crystal. Uh, she said MSN. Okay. That was from before. We've got the next question coming in. Any info on nurse practitioner school through the Army? Ironically, uh, next week we actually have an additional uh, presentation with the Army nurse, and she's going to bring some really good relevant information regarding nurses and nurse practitioners. But I'm sure Sergeant Booth could also add on to that. Sure. Um, so, what was the question again? I'm sorry. They just okay. wanted. Any info on nurse practitioner school through the Army? Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure specifically if there's a specific Army program. That would be a great question for Captain Weaver, who I believe is going to be on here next week. Um, yeah. But if you're trying to do like HPSP for nurse practitioner school, you can go to any whatever program you want within the United States, similarly to like any medical school. So um, here in the Missouri, Kansas area where I'm located, we have – um, Missouri State University, which has a CRNA program. And I did a little presentation with them recently and talked about HPSP. So they can still go to that school and receive HPSP to pay for their nurse practitioner school um, if they're doing okay. uh, a doctor of nurse practitioner, for family nurse practitioner. Okay. And we've got, let's see, we've got another question coming in from YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. Uh, what would someone need in a packet to make it competitive? for SWIP program for someone that is active duty second lieutenant in the army with an LMSW and an MSW? Okay, great question. So like I said before um, with HPSP, and this goes for all applications, the army's looking for the total person concept. So good letters of recommendation for spe specifically for SWIP. Um, if you've already done like shadowing hours with social workers, Things like that are going to be very beneficial. If you can get letters of recommendation from currently serving Army social workers, that's going to be excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Or the second lieutenant, the fact that they're already serving is very good. Um, so that's excellent. Good statement of motivation. So you're going to have to write a little essay stating, mm -hmm. you know, what your motivation is for becoming a social worker in the Army. Uh, and then other things like job experience. If you have job experience as a social worker, that's going to be beneficial as well. So every little thing helps. Um, to be competitive, it's really hard to say because you get people that apply from all walks of life, people that are civilians, people that are captains. And, you know, you get people from everywhere that have a lot of job experience. They have good letters of recommendation, good academics. Yeah. So it really just goes back to that total person concept. I know that's kind of not a specific answer, um, but the fact of the matter is the people that sit on the board look for specific things and – we're not really privy to exactly what they're looking for specifically other than we know it's the total person concept. 
tracking, tracking. Okay, thanks for the uh, question, uh, Ms. Tala. Uh, we've got, we've got next, we've got first on Filipowski. Oh, he nice. asked, uh, if I am a recruiter in USAREC with my bachelor's degree and want to go to medical school, what would, be, what would the process be? Obviously, I would have to meet the medical school requirements and take the MCAT. After that, would I apply to medical school and submit a 4187 through USAREC chain of command? Would I have to go to back to MEX or can I, or can I go to an army hospital for the physical? If I owe time to my current enlisted contract, uh, would that roll over to my HPSP commitment? That's a great question. Uh, great multiple of questions. Um, so yes, you can apply um, for HPSP. You would have to be able to uh, get into medical school and take the MCAT and meet all the minimum requirements for any HPSP applicant. Um, you would have to get released from USREC and active duty because when you're doing HPSP, while you're in medical school, you're technically in a reserve status. So you're mm -hmm. in a non-deployable reserve status. So you're technically in the army reserves. So you're gonna have to get released from active duty and that paperwork will have to, yes, be submitted through your chain of command all the way up through your first general officer, as I understand it. So will that, uh, let me backtrack. So the physical, you can do the physical at a military treatment facility or at MEPS, okay? Uh, I personally would recommend if you have the availability of going to a military facility to do your physical, I would do that. Um, the MEPS process can be kind of painful depending on the MEPS and it can take a little longer. Whereas scheduling mm -hmm. a commissioning physical at your local medical treatment facility in the military is usually a little quicker. Um, and that's just the process as a whole takes a while. So anything to expedite the process is beneficial, I think. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so the okay. time you would owe for your enlisted contract. Now that's kind of tricky. I don't know the 100% answer for that. I would imagine that you would have some time to, that you would have to pay back for that. Now, yeah, I don't have a good answer for that question, honestly. Um, I would have to get some, dig, do some research and find out. Okay, we've got another question. Thanks for the uh, question there, Top. Appreciate you. The next question that comes in from YouTube, it says, is there a max time service for HPSP or any of the programs? I'm a reserve components with 10 years active duty. Uh, are that, so I, I'm interpreting the question as, do they is have there a max time? for HPSP. So is there... Uh, I'm guessing they don't. They're, they're asking, can I have a certain amount of time in federal service already? Is there like a max, like a cap, like for OCS, I think you can only have like seven years of federal service before you need a waiver. I think that's kind of what they're asking. Um, it looks like they has a follow-up part to that. So the follow-up part is with five years reserve, so a total 15 years, but about 11 years of active duty. Okay. Total of 15 years, but yeah, okay. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, there shouldn't be any reason they wouldn't be able to apply. Um, mm -hmm. and there's eight waivers, so they might be a little older based off the amount of time and service that they have already. Um, and there is age waivers, so the reserve time and service, not a big deal. That's okay. only going to strengthen their application. Good deal, good deal. We've got another question coming in from Ryan McCollum. Uh, I've met all the prereqs for the MSW program through UK. Uh, when should I start the application process through UK and through USAREC? That's a great question. Um, so first thing, figure out when the application deadline is for the University of Kentucky. Uh, I don't know that off the top of my head, but you definitely have to meet their application deadline as well as our deadline. So like I was saying for MSW, that board takes place in February. So. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to start the application process for this next coming year, um, it doesn't hurt to reach out to a recruiter now, but I would say like six months before the application deadline is when you at least at the latest should start getting the process started just because you don't wanna be scrambling at the very end to try to get things. Correct. Okay. So it looks like we've got some messages and comments. Uh, there she goes, Holly Renee, AKA the Army Nurse. She said, thanks for coming on and providing great information on how to apply. 
Thank you for that, Holly. We've got first Sarn saying, thank you, Sarn Booth. Uh, great information for the entire field. Uh, da, 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 da. Are there any other comments? Any other comments? We've got a random boom from Rosella Scott. We really appreciate the boom. Thank you for that. Uh, it seems that Holly Renee said, and I think she's uh, answering that question that we were asked, we were uh, wondering about earlier. She said, uh, the soldier has to be released. Uh, so it cancels the current enlistment contract and a new obligation starts with HBSP. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. And it looks like those are all the comments. Do we have any more comments or questions from the field? Going once, going twice, and soul. Of course, if you all ever have any questions, anything, uh, I guess, for us, uh, his information is scrolling right there on the bottom. Feel free to reach out to Sarn Booth, feel free to reach out to myself, and I will point you in the right direction to talk to a counselor. Oh, look, look, hold on, we've got another question. We've got another question, lucky for us. It says, um, if selected for the SWIP program, would the Army repay any existing loans for my MSW? Is there a sign-on bonus available, uh, available for a select for a SWIP? Great question. Uh, unfortunately, no. So your incentive is that internship program, essentially. So mm -hmm. there's not an additional bonus or anything like that. Um, but that's not to say that later on down the road, if you're still, if you get selected for SWIP and you are an Army social worker, that later on down the road, there might not be a retention bonus for you to stay in the Army, which could help um, pay off those loans. Or maybe there's some sort of loan repayment in the future. Everything in the Army changes. Uh, the amount of loans and incentives available changes regularly as well. So things could always change and that could also change. You never know. They might start offering some sort of sign on bonus for SWIP at some point. It may happen, but it may happen. Don't always wait oh. just for those changes, you know, <laughs> wait, just take care of what you'd want to take care of right now. So that, you know, you just want to make sure you square yourself away before, you know, things are taken away. Exactly. Yeah. Never know. Time. You just, and you know, we've got another comment from Rosella Scott. I'm really looking forward to being part of this team. Next to our major. How you doing? Looking forward to meeting you when you get here, okay? Cool. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. And it looks like those are all of our comments for today. Um, you know, we really appreciate you coming out and just sharing this good information for us, Asan Booth. Uh, looking forward to having you come back again and share some really good relevant information out there for the field. And for those who may be interested, of course, for Army Medical School scholarships. Yeah, I appreciate you having me out here. And again, if anyone's got any questions, they can reach out. I might not have all the answers, but I can definitely research them or point the person in the right direction to get the answer um, for sure, because there's a lot of info. So uh, yeah. we work as a team here in USREC. So everyone knows a little bit more than other people, vice versa. Yeah. Yep, yep. I appreciate you, Sarn. We will talk to you again, okay? All right, thank you. All right, so we had a great opportunity to learn a lot about uh, Army Medical School scholarships. Of course, if you ever have any questions uh, so for Sarn Booth, his information is scrolling on the bottom. And of course, if you have information, comments, or questions for us in the 5th Medical Recruiting Battalion, reach out to me, Otis Toussaint. I am on a multitude of social media pages. Uh, look us up, 5th uh, Medical Recruiting Battalion, and we will get you an answer and a response. So in parting in saying, I will always say, take care of yourself and we look forward to your next presentation. Thanks. Mm -hmm.